Howdy Banjo Ben here with my friend Justin Bond who runs the setup bench here at Banjo Ben's General Store. This is where you spend a lot of your time in it Justin. It is. And you're making sure that all the instruments that we get out the door are set up and playing as perfectly as they can yeah. be whenever the... Every single one man it takes about anywhere from 30 minutes to even an hour and a half sometimes. Wow. But people can trust when they buy instruments from, from us that they're ready to play when they hit their door. They can, yeah. That's great man. Well I'm thankful for all the work that you do and today we're going to show people how to set their intonation on their mandolin bridges. Very specifically, uh, what do I mean by that? I mean the mandolin needs to be intonated. That means that as you play up the neck of a mandolin, it stays in tune. Because a lot of times we can have a mandolin in tune with open strings. We start playing notes up the neck or playing chords and it sounds horrible. Mm -hmm. Like, why is that? I thought the mandolin was in tune. Yeah. Well, it might be in tune with open strings, but your bridge might be in the wrong spot and that's going to cause some problems. Yep. So Definitely. a lot of times if you buy a mandolin from someone, a secondhand mandolin, or sometimes brand new from stores, they won't be in the right place. Mm -hmm. Um, or another reason why we might need to know how to do this is if you're like somebody I know from my past and uh, change mandolin <laughs> strings and let the bridge fall down or let the bridge fall off. Um, so if you're needing to replace your bridge, make sure you get it on the right spot to correct the intonation. That's what we're doing today. Do you have any overall tips just to start folks off? Sure. Look at that. Yeah. So if you're if you're starting from scratch and you know your bridge is falling off or something like that, a good thing you can do is just tune up the A string. So take all the other ones down slack. Yeah. You you can loosen the other ones or just keep them you know fairly loose and tune this up to pitch. So just A and um, go ahead and intonate that and that will get you pretty close for the rest of it and that'll give you a ballpark and then you can adjust it after that. And the reason why you want to do that is just to reduce the tension on the bridge, make it easier to mm -hmm. move, right? Yeah, yeah. Because it's pretty, if you have a full tension, it's easy for that bridge to yeah. pop over, maybe even damage the top of your instrument. So Definitely. we just want to give you that warning. You can proceed at your own risk. Uh, with that, but it makes it a lot easier if we just have one string tightened up. Yep, definitely. It's a lot um, easier to move. How is it easy? Are we going to be able to get this thing perfect, Justin? It, you, no matter what you do, you can't get anything perfect. Is that just because this it, is a Kentucky no, lower no, line mandolin? Definitely Great not. mandolin, but yeah, these are also mandolins, but there's no way to get every string perfect on any instrument, no matter what it is. We're just going to try to get it as good as we can. Yeah, we're going to try to get it to 95% of the way there, and that's yeah. definitely going to get us. That's awesome, man. Okay, so how do we intonate this thing? Okay, perfect. So we'll start out, I always start out by working laterally. So sometimes, depending on how it is, you might find the strings pushed off to the side one way or another. You can see they're real far on this side right now. Yeah, we'll so, get it lined up straight for the camera and it can see right down yeah. that neck. There you go. So, so there, the, the bass side is pushed closer to the fingerboard than the treble side. That's not good. No. Definitely not. So we want to we want to adjust this before we even start the intonation process. So I'm going to line it up on this inlay right here. You can also line it up on the sides of the fretboard. Cool. Just kind of eyeballing it. So that looks pretty good to me right there. So we'll go on from there. Okay. So we've got it centered in the mandolin body this way. Now we need to make sure that it's in the right spot uh, vertically. You might say. Um, yeah. Awesome. Okay. How are you going to do that? Okay. Yeah. It's real simple. So we're just going to play a chime here at the 12th fret. Okay, so you play a harmonic, and if you don't know how to play harmonics, you can go on my website and uh, look up how to play harmonics, but you're just gonna place your finger right on top of the string at the 12th fret. Don't press it down, but right over the 12th fret and play a harmonic. And then we're gonna compare that note to the actual fretted note. Ah, And you okay. can hear that one there is very flat. I'll do it one more time. Two different tones. Yeah, two completely different notes. Different notes yeah. So the harmonic pitch is not matching the fretted pitch at the 12th exactly. fret. Exactly. And that's how we yeah. know that it's not intonated. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it might, like that time the harmonic was sharper than the fretted note. It's possible that it could be flatter than the fretted note. Yeah. That kind of tells us which direction we need to move our bridge. Yeah, right? yeah, definitely. There's, you know, two ways you can go. So in this case, since this one's flat, I always think uh, flat for forward. So if it's flat, we're going to go forward, and if it's sharp, then we would go back. Okay. And you're talking about the fretted notes tone. Yes. Okay. And I'm talking about moving the bridge. So in this case, we would need to move the bridge forward. forward some. Yeah. So we're going to raise the pitch of that fretted note. Mm -hmm. You can hear huh. that's pretty red, so... 
This is a pro moving the bridge here, folks. Yeah, you gotta be, be pretty careful. careful if you try to do it. If you press on the top of the bridge, you're gonna flop it over. So mm -hmm. be careful. Let's see if that changed anything. Oh man. A little closer, but we're still off. It doesn't take much, and of course it depends on how far you're out, but. It's that's getting really close. Yeah, that's now. real close now. So now we're to the point of, of move, micro, moving like micro a, adjustments. Yeah, like a pencil line. Gotcha. Maybe not even that much. Oh man, that might be in. Yeah, it's real close. You can even use a tuner to compare those two notes if your ear's not good enough, but yeah. you should be able to hear. Yeah. I think that's in. Yeah. So another thing that you can tell is when you get it intonated, you'll notice that the whole instrument just seems to kind of come alive. Oh, interesting. Yeah, a big change there. So really vital that you get intonation right on any instrument that has a floating bridge. So whenever you think you're getting close like this, you just did the E string. Is that when you tune everything up and check the G strings harmonic versus mm -hmm. the fret tone too? Yep. Is that to make sure that our bridge is straight this way? Yeah, definitely. And sometimes you may need to, you know, kind of move it just a hair either way. Yeah. Uh, every instrument's different and, um, you know, everything's different like that. So yeah, you may have to move it a little bit, but not much. And we even see that the bridge is a bit compensated mm -hmm. to try to perhaps yeah, but, counter some of that. Yeah, things. definitely. And we're not talking today about mandolin height, uh, string height and mandolin action. Uh, that's in another video today. We're talking about getting that bridge positioned at the correct place to have uh, intonation as we play up the mandolin neck. Okay, so when you think that you've gotten close, one thing that I've noticed and just over the course of intonating instruments, as you move this bridge, it's going to get out of tune again, right? Yep. So often after I make the adjustments that I want to make, I'll go back, retune the instrument, and then we'll do some final checks. So let's tune it up and we'll be right back with you. We've got this mandolin all tuned up and the intonation sounds great. Let's show that to folks and also verify a couple different ways that we can tell yeah. for sure. Yeah, definitely. So we'll demonstrate now. You can hear that, that's pretty, pretty on. Yeah. yeah, yeah it is pretty close. And might you try that on another string to see sure. if it's... Yeah, really close. Yeah. Yeah, at this point, this is definitely... I mean, you couldn't fight it tooth and nail at this point to get just a hair better. But, I mean, it's totally good, ready to play. Yeah. You don't need to do anything else to it when it's this close. Okay. So, What are some other things you like to do to just see if yeah. the intonation is right on? Yeah, so like I said earlier, you can always tell when, you, when you're getting really close because the instrument will start uh, ringing more and resonating more. So what I like to do is play uh, some kind of a little scale like that to listen to those individual notes as they go up. And you can hear this note just that ringing. That mandolin just came alive. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, you can hear all those tones in there. So when you get that really pure sound there then you know you're as either perfect or as close as you can get so yeah and then further whenever we begin to play our chords and melodies up the neck it's going to remain in tune it's going to note true unlike yeah. it was before mm -hmm. right. everything's going to fall into place okay well the same principles are true for banjo and for fiddle mm -hmm. uh, for anything with a movable bridge like you talked about we do have a video for banjo intonation that you'd want to check out if you want to see it specifically for banjo but thank you, Justin. Yeah, that was no really problem, good, man. Glad to help. I'm confident I can intonate all my mandolins now. I'm sure they are too. <laughs> Thanks, man. See ya.